Hi everyone. So I've always loved yoga and practiced many different styles for years and years. Um, and especially during my time studying dance and drama at university, yoga was a very popular technique used by my teachers um, for warm up, relaxation, focus, and of course, fitness. Um, but sometimes I would hear people saying, and still do hear people saying, that yoga is a form of idol worship. Now, as a person who loves God, I did not want anything to compromise my relationship with God. So I began to do a lot of research um, and the Holy Spirit really planted a seed of desire in me to know God and understand Jesus, Yahusha, um, on a much more personal level. Um, so using the library and of course the internet, I started to take a trip back into history um, and thanks to the writings of Pliny the Elder um, who was a Roman author, the Dead Sea Scrolls discovered at Qumran in 1947, especially the Essene Gospel of Peace, um, also the Nag Hammadi Library and uh, Josephus Flavius Titus to name a few. I discovered a holy sect known as the Essenes, which the Apocrypha of John describes as the immovable race of perfect light humans, believed to originate from the time of Enoch, whom gen in Genesis it says were the seventh generation for Adam. And it just so happened that they practiced yoga. Now, the scholars who translated the Dead Sea Scrolls, owned by the Essenes, found that the earliest forms of Christianity were based on the teachings of the Essenes. And the Essenes were dedicated to perfecting their bodies, temples and souls to become more angelic in hope of restoring peace on earth. The scrolls say that this teaching was given to the Essenes by uh, otherworldly beings referred to as the holy angels of the Lord or the watcher angels. And some, some of you may even know them as the Anunnaki. Um, the Essenes lived in a few places such as Carmel and Qumran, home of the Dead Sea Scrolls, and it is believed that Jesus was one of them. There are several books um, recommended on my website, seekvision.co.uk, that are all about the Essenes. Now, Jesus's original Hebrew name was Yahusha. Translations of this powerful name include Yahushua, Yeshua, Joshua, Aesis, and more recently, Jesus. These names also per pertain to the Son, and to the eternal, internal Christ oil. Um, but that side of things, i.e. macrocosm, microcosm, and the majestic layers of creation will be covered in the upcoming extended sacred secretion study. Um, for this, we will use the name Yahusha because it appears 216 times in the early Bibles or Torahs where Yahushua only appears twice and of course the translation Jesus Christ doesn't appear at all and that's a reference from the Torah Institute. So the ancient manuscripts found at Qumran known as the Dead Sea Scrolls show that Yahusha taught the doctrine of certain prophets for example Jeremiah, Isaiah and Daniel. And he also taught the Essene way, or Essene yoga. Well, if Yahusha was teaching Isaiah, then let's digress for a moment to take a peek at some Isaiah and Jeremiah for ourselves. Isaiah 52.2 says, Shake yourself from the dust. Arise, loose yourself from the bonds of your neck. Not only does this clearly tell us to set ourselves free, but we have also been given the Torah or word of God to assist us. 
Jeremiah 31, 33 says, I will place my Torah inside them and write it on their hearts. This is another example of how the word becomes flesh because this God-given intuition, this law of God, this Torah is in our hearts. The sword or word of the spirit is always available for us to use against the deceptions of darkness. According to an article in the Chippewa County Clipper, Wisconsin, the Syrian Archbishop of Jerusalem, Ma Arthansius Yeshu Samuel, claims that the Dead Sea Scrolls are proof that Jesus Christ, Yahusha's coming, was foretold. And further to say, many persons believe the Isaiah scroll found in the Dead Sea cave was the same exact manuscript placed into the hands of Jesus when he was a youth in the temple. Um, when his followers wanted to show him how his coming had been awaited, um, as described in the New Testament. Uh, many circumstances point to this belief, the Archbishop said. The location of the cave uh, near where the temple probably stood, the careful state of preservation and the likelihood that these scrolls may have been placed there by close followers of Christ. So, now that we have established Yahusha, Jesus, as an Essene and teacher of the small prophets' doctrines, let's move on to the Essene way or Essene yoga. And getting past the dogma will be the most important part. Okay, yoga does not contradict Yahusha's teachings, it precedes them. Research suggests that the Essene movement was started when Buddhist monks sent from India by the great Emperor Ashoka, whose name actually meant he who regards everyone with affection around 250 BC to Alexandria in Egypt to work with Jewish, Egyptian, Persian and Iraqi mystics. The Sanskrit word yoga is a synonym of the Latin word religion and the lig in religion comes from the Latin root ligare which means union or yoke and is a path to mergence with the creator and it was this path to the creator that is exactly what the Essenes sought to find. The Bible also tells us to seek unity and yoke with God. For example, uh, in Matthew 11:30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So if original religion meant simply a path to emergence with God, then we can also say that yoga is religion because yoga is a conscious effort to unite or merge with God, our inner I am and the outer creator. Um, and there's an extremely poignant coincidence that I-O-N, ion, appear at the word of religion as well um, but again, that is something that is covered in the extended sec sacred secretion study, which um, I'm working on too. Um, so the Essene way or Essene yoga, there are many different styles of yoga. So which one was Jesus, Yahusha teaching? Um, the ancient Essene manuscripts reveal that the Essene way was an amalgamation of several yogic traditions, including Hatha, Bhakti, Yana, which is spelled with a J, Karma, Mantra, Leia, and Raja, and each one conditions an essential part of our spiritual union with God. 
So let's take a brief look at the yoga traditions included in a scene yoga. One, Hatha, also expressed as and associated with asana and pranayama, the third and fourth limbs of yoga, and their movement and breathing. Now, the primary focus of Hatha yoga is building control of the physical body, which in turn, of course, increases strength resolve and determination of the mind and movement of course conditions the body which is the temple of the holy spirit 1 corinthians 6 19 and movement not only improves the circulation of blood but it also assists in blood purification and we know that leviticus 17 11 tells us that the life of the body is in the blood and then number two, we have Bhakti, um, also expressed as or associated with Yama, uh, the first limb of yoga. Now, Bhakti focuses on the use of singing and chanting, but it's, it's a thankful disposition that expresses love for God. The Essene way taught us to approach yoga and all of life in a state of Bhakti, so that we can look to God's love in all things. Be anxious for nothing, but in all things by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And that is Philippians 4, 6. Number three, karma. Now, karma yoga isn't something that would be necessarily understood as yoga in today's world, as it's not something that just happens during our practice or routine time, but it's to do with serving God continually in our love and our actions towards the world and others. Um, it's like a takeaway understanding that for whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Galatians 6, 7. Number four, Yana or Guyana, also associated with Niyama and Dhyana, are the second and seventh limbs of yoga. Now, similarly to Karma Yoga, Yana isn't what we commonly now perceive as yoga because it has to do with knowledge. Um, now, knowledge is obtained by asking ourselves questions such as, what is my purpose and who is God? To which we may find the answers in sacred holy texts or deep in meditation. Uh, number five is mantra. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, Revelation 1.16. The mouth is, of course, a means of expressing one's heart, um, and the two-edged sword typifies the twofold power of either denial or affirmation. Um, so mantra yoga uses the power of the spoken word, the sword, and its powerful vibrations, in the beginning was the word, to manifest peace, light, and love in ourselves and of course in the world that we live in. Number six, Raja, also associated with Dharana and Samadhi are the sixth and eighth limbs of yoga. Now, Raja pertains to transcending mind beyond attachment to any carnal understanding. It is silent meditation time that allows us to hear God's voice and makes space for God's vision in our lives. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. Psalm 1-2. In a state of bhakti, raja and a total understanding of I am can there be achieved. Number seven is Leia also expressed as Pratyahara or the fifth limb of yoga, which is also associated with Kundalini and Tantra. Laya yoga is present in all traditions and pertains to the use of our breath. 
The Greek word for Holy Spirit is pneuma barash, and it literally means breath and wind. Like Kundalini, Leia acknowledges the subtle energy of the chakras and their coinciding physical glands and focuses on raising the sacred secretion, frequency and energy within the body. In advanced lessons, Leia Yoga is also used to develop total authority over our senses. The breath, movement and meditation all work together to help physical, emotional and spiritual blockages to dissolve, setting us completely free from our attachments to the material world, deceptions of darkness and limits, and it gives God full reign over our lives. I have reached the inner vision and through thy spirit in me, I have heard thy wondrous secret. Through thy mystic insight, thou has caused a spring of knowledge to well up within me, a fountain of power pouring forth living waters and that is from the Essene Book of Hymns, the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, because Essene Yoga incorporates all of these integral spirit nourishing teachings, instead of singling one out to be primarily more important than the others, it is arguably more powerful than any other form of yoga and is described thoroughly in the Essene Bible called the Holy Megila. Now, all of this research um, and knowledge is culminated into my app, Freedom Yoga, um, of which two versions are now available, free, there is a free version and a pro version on both iOS and Android. Links in the description box. Now, Similarly to the Essene Way or Essene Yoga, I've worked hard to make sure that Freedom Yoga includes elements of Hatha, building strength, coordination and flexibility in the body and the mind, inspiration from Bhakti, using the breath and prayer to invite and maintain a disposition of peace, gratitude and love all the time. We know how hard that can be. Deep cleansing breaths in each pose and repetitive exercises with synchronized breaths stem from the teachings of Leia Yoga, um, helping to stimulate the sacral pump and the occiput in the throat, which charges energy or sacred secretion and blood and CSF up the spine. Um, and each practice also ends with silent time. Raja, I've incorporated many positive I am affirmations into each pose, thus remembering the power of mantra given to us by our ancient ancestors. And lastly, um, Yana and Karma are incorporated by putting in some scripture verses um, that have been carefully chosen to complement the mood, theme and vibration of each pose or exercise. So both versions, free and pro of my Freedom Yoga app allow you to create your own yoga practice. You simply choose as many or as few exercises as you wish, then select your music and the app will then guide you through your self-customized session. So I've been practicing this style of yoga myself for many years and I have felt many benefits. Um, especially recently I've experienced serious mental and spiritual breakthrough um, and not to mention the intense healing emotionally and physically that has taken place in my life thanks to god now i know you all want to know does this yoga like raise the sacred secretion it does of course help to achieve focus 
and raise the sacred secretion. But I don't want that to be the focus because the sacred secretion will rise effortlessly in any whom are pure of heart, mind and body anyway. So that shouldn't be the focus. The aim should be Christ-like intentions of bhakti or to know God's love and embody the understanding of unconditional love and limitless power because that is what truly sets us free and will hopefully inevitably restore peace to earth one day. Thanks for watching. Freedom Yoga is available for free on iOS and Android. Um, the links are in the description below um, and the pro version is also available on iOS and Android for a small price and it gives you 33 tailored exercises. Again, the links are below. Peace and light to you all. God bless. Freedom Yoga. Step one, select your poses, as many or as few as you wish. Step two, select your music. Step three, play your custom yoga practice. Freedom Yoga, available to download from the App Store and Play Store now. Heel, tone, strengthen, energize, release and be free, body, mind and spirit.